The Greet development team often receives questions from users regarding similar topics or issues. So in this video, we'll address some of these frequently asked questions. I'll explain the differences between Greet.net, Greet Excel 1, and Greet Excel 2. Then I'll discuss some finer points related to interpreting results. And finally, I'll explain how Greet uses functional units. I've touched on each of these topics in previous videos, but here I'll provide some deeper explanation. There are two platforms of the Greet model. One is built in Microsoft Excel, and the other is built in Microsoft.net. Within the Excel platform, Greet Excel 1 was the first to be developed, released by Argonne National Lab in 1996. The advantages of a spreadsheet-based model are that formulas are traceable, and the format of Excel is familiar to most users, which makes it easy to start using. Though as the Greet model grew to include more variety of pathways, this platform became more complex, and the pathways became more spread out over the many worksheets in the model. Greet Excel 2 is for modeling the vehicle cycle of the cradle-to-grave, or well-to-wheels, life cycle of a fuel. It extends Greet Excel 1 to allow more detailed modeling of the pump-to-wheels portion of the life cycle, and Greet Excel 1 and Excel 2 are intended to be used in conjunction with each other. In order to present Greet with a more user-friendly point-and-click interface, Greet.net was developed and released in 2013. Greet.net combines all the data in Greet Excel into a single environment using a Microsoft.net framework. The advantages of this platform are that the fuel pathways are in a more linear structure that is easier to follow, components of fuel pathways can be dragged and dropped into place, and there is more capability for incorporating unique user features and tools. The .NET framework might not be as familiar to some users as Excel, so some user trial and error may be needed to build familiarity with Greet.net. Greet Excel 1, Greet Excel 2, and Greet.net can all be downloaded for free from the Greet website. Many Greet users send in questions about how to interpret well-to-pump results. This is obviously an important part of Greet, so I'll talk through how results are organized in the WTP pane using Greet 2017. To remind you, well-to-pump results in the WTP pane can be found in the lower left frame. The results are organized into three major drop-down categories, emissions, resources, and urban emissions. The contents of these three may change over time, and additional headers like flow properties may be added, but emissions, resources, and urban emissions are the main categories for results across Greek platforms. Emissions are listed first and are shown to be well-to-use emissions because we're in the well-to-pump pane. Individual emissions are listed beginning with criteria air pollutants, then greenhouse gases, then other emissions. There is one group under emissions for GHG 100, which reports the IPCC Fifth Assessment Report 100-Year Global Warming Potential for Carbon Dioxide, Methane, and Nitrous Oxide, as well as the GWP for the carbon contained in the other emissions in the list. Emissions will be presented with default units of mass per functional unit of output, for example, 14 kilograms per mmBTU of diesel. Resources are listed second, as a reminder, resources are all the energy sources and materials that are transformed, transported, or otherwise used in stationary and transportation processes in Crete. The WTP results show the quantity of resources used per unit of output, and again they are well to use. The individual resources list reports the quantities of all the energy sources that were required to produce one functional unit of the pathway output. All resources have units of energy per functional unit of output, with the exceptions of water, which is in units of volume per functional unit, and uranium ore, which is in units of mass per functional unit. The list generally includes the more primary fossil resources, followed by a mix of secondary fossil resources and renewable sources of energy. The groups list presents the same quantities of energy resources, just aggregated into useful categories like fossil fuel, and renewables. Some users appreciate these aggregated groupings. Most users, though, want to see the contributions of individual resources. Urban emissions are last in the results frame, and these are well-to-use emissions occurring in urban areas in the U.S., so they're a subset of the overall emissions that I've already discussed. 
These emissions results follow the same organization and have similar units as the overall emissions above. This subset may be useful if you are studying urban areas, but again, most users will only ever be interested in the overall emissions. Users can change their preferred mass or energy units by clicking Preferences in the main menu and selecting General Settings, then changing the user-defined units. Also, there are two buttons at the top of the results frame to sort results categorically or alphabetically. In the last part of this Frequently Asked Questions video, I want to revisit the concept of the functional unit and how it's used in Greet. If you remember, the functional unit defines the life cycle results produced in Greet. It could be a quantity of mass, volume, or energy of an output product by which all inputs used in the product's system will be reported. In the WTP pane, the functional unit is listed just above the results frame. In the WTW pane, the functional unit selector is featured just above the results table. To change the functional unit in the WTP pane, simply click the box containing the unit and a window will open. You can specify the unit group, unit, and amount, then click apply, and the results will automatically refresh so that the result quantities will be proportional to the new functional unit. When selecting different processes of a pathway to view individual process results, the unit in the functional unit may stay the same, for example, one megajoule, but the main output will change and results will be in new terms. For example, the pathway output for reformulated gasoline, or E10, is E10 with emission results in units of grams per one megajoule of E10. If I click on the upstream process of gasoline blend stock, the emission results are still in units of grams per megajoule, but now it's one megajoule of gasoline blend stock, which is the output of that process. So once again, make sure to pay attention to your functional unit when investigating upstream process results. That's it for the Frequently Asked Questions video. We'll try to answer more commonly asked questions in a future video, so feel free to email your questions to the GREET development team or myself. Thanks for watching.